<laughs> that was uh hold on we'll wait till it, it should be back just a second but oh, we're back um that's okay this yeah. is groundbreaking this is from well you know what i'm doing is the little control <laughs> bar on the bottom the control bar on the bottom is the stop button and it was in the same place that i hit to yeah. try to get the low so let me minimize the control bar so that won't happen again okay we're good now all right so you were saying yeah there, there's one thing it's kind of related to what we were talking about the cyclones and the if you look at the western central gulf waters they really don't have the same time in contact with the waters that the ones that form over the western caribbean they can stay longer over water so a, a tropical storm on the central or western gulf at that time of the year it would have to have what we call basically explosive intensification it has to quickly become a strong a strong hurricane because what makes these systems uh, take off really quickly towards the east and come straight into the west coast of florida is normally because they get hit by a trough mm -hmm. but um you and i as meteorologists we also know that that has a price and it's that when uh, when a trough encounters a hurricane uh, you know what's going to happen right the trough naturally is going to want to absorb the tropical cyclone hmm. there's a process that we call merging so if the hurricane didn't have enough time to develop and to become strong by the time that the trough starts picking it up it's most likely that the the, the tropical storm itself is going to be start being absorbed into the trough and it's going to certainly it's going to lose intensity um it but when you have a strong hurricane a well-developed hurricane by the time it makes it to the gulf like the ones that come from the Western Caribbean, they're strong enough that they can withstand the, the initial interaction with the trough. And the trough steers them to change their direction. It's gonna, this trough starts steering the hurricanes towards the east. And at the process of merging starts right away, but it takes longer because the hurricane is more healthier. It has a stronger structure and it takes longer for the trough to start absorbing it into the trough. Mm -hmm. And I hope I didn't confuse. No, yeah, I, I will tell you, this is not, th this group here is not the typical um, just getting, watching the weather for the seven day forecast. This group is a group that's usually very interested in weather and certainly higher end awesome. users, if you will. And you've seen that many times too, Dennis. I mean, oh, absolutely. We've seen that time to time. It's, it, you know, it's eventually, you know, there are two things that hurricanes, they are mighty system, powerful systems. But there's still two things in the atmosphere that they cannot fight. One is a very strong high pressure system. And that's why all those hurricanes, they keep moving around the periphery of the high. And a lot of people, I don't know if you ever had this question, but I, I get this question a lot. People are like, wow, when you see one storm this time of the year, it forms. And then you see that the ones that form behind it, they all follow it. So the first storm kind of like opened the way and the other ones are following. That's not the case, it's the opposite. Mm -hmm. they, they're just following the edge of the high, strong high pressure system because they have nowhere else to go. They follow the path of least resistance, which is what somebody actually just said about this. Is, it, is that true that a tropical system would, would follow a path of least resistance? And in a sense, in a, in a, in a simple way, that's exactly what they do. Exactly. Um, uh, by, by the way, um, as I was looking at, at some of these other ones, you know, we've had a lot of questions about the different models, and I'm just looking here that the h wharf. Uh, the experimental H wharf, which yesterday had the center of Ophelia going directly into the Caribbean, um, now it's actually staying north of the islands. But the GFDL certainly appears to be the the model that is the one that it insists on bringing this into the Caribbean. Um, in fact, notice what it does. If you notice, it's pretty ragged, which makes sense because we were saying. I think, in my opinion. And I think a lot of folks is, if this stays ragged, as we talked about with Tony, it's far more likely to go west than to travel absolutely. along the ridge. Yes, absolutely. So if this is ragged, and at this point, it looks like it's barely even a depression, um, but look at the very end. The very end of this run, that's really the key time frame. And we even went ahead eight days down the road last night because I was curious if there might be a trough eight, nine days down the road that would encourage it 
to come north. Now again, what we're looking at here, this is nothing. It's a depression. There's there's no wind to it. I mean, I think I'm looking on the right side. The highest wind is 30 knots. So I mean, it might have been a named storm. Yeah, but, also, um, also, if you look at that image, go it, back. Mm -hmm. it's very unlikely that a trough, that a strong trough is going to make it all the way down there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which was interesting that you say that, and I agree 100%, except last week, the GFS was going ballistic. It was taking a 982 low in yeah. Canada, in Newfoundland, <laughs> and bringing up yeah. a, a, yeah, a storm that was almost on South America. And yeah. we were talking about it on this very site because it was insane that it was doing that. In fact, I even said, I mean, that low was right about here, and it was bringing a tropical storm from here and hitting it due north. And I said, I don't think I've ever seen that powerful of a storm in September yeah. in Canada bringing, catching a tropical storm near South America. And that's exactly what it was showing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I'm actually hearing from our web guys saying that the volume does seem to keep going up and down, and that's quite possibly because I hit stop accidentally. I'm not sure why it's why it's uh, why it's changing because the levels yeah, are back yeah. in. But but I don't real know quick, if the audience can hear it, but the no, they do. Double repeat came back. Oh, it did really. Yeah, I hear you twice now. Interesting. All right. Well, um, very odd. That must it must something to do with stopping and restarting it. I'm not. Let me check the mixer real quick. Now it, it's all the setting is the same. So. And it's just one of those things right now. I'm afraid until we until we master it or until we come up with a uh, a solution for this fix. But real quick, I, I want you to, if you could, um, mention as we're looking at some of the um, some of the other models in terms of um, the euro, which I'm a big fan of the euro. Um, can you explain the difference between an operational and an ensemble? Well, basically. If to put it in very simple words, the operational is like the baseline and the ensemble, what they do is that they take several points of, in, of initializing um, the, ba the basic model and they interpolate one on top of another. Mm -hmm. So and they basically keep changing the, the initial point of what we call the point of initialization. And then they compare them, they compare those different runs and then they kind of like pick the one that they think is the best looking in terms of what they think is going to happen. It's they're basically the ensembles come from the same basic GFS. Um, you can use Euro and you can use um, the WARF model, but normally the ensemble is the same GFS that is uh, what we could call layered. So they use different points of initializing the model, and then it's like they stack them, and then they compare them and. They normally pick the one that they think is representing the system the best. And what we're looking at now, Tony, just some of the spaghetti models from the Swift Mo uh, Swift Mud site. And again, I, you know, look at this. Um, you've got the the green. I'm not sure which one. That's the bands, I guess. But you look at this. I mean, it's going just chugging along, and then all of a sudden, boom! It feels that trough, and it just goes due north. It just grabs it north. And look how yeah, far yeah. south it is when it does that. I mean, that just seems incredibly unlikely to me. Um, I, well, actually, I, if you look at that island right there, Puerto Rico right there, that's where I basically grew up and lived there, and I saw many tropical storms and many hurricanes there. Um, I can tell you that it's time of the year, such a trough is very unlikely. It's not impossible. Mm -hmm. There's always a first time. Mm -hmm. and Absolutely. So far, I haven't seen such a powerful trough remaining healthy enough to, to have such an impact on, on the tropical cyclone that is moving that area. And Randy just brought up a point, and, and um, yesterday the majority of the models went into the Caribbean. Today they seem to be trending north. And Randy, yeah. that's more than likely because these models are now trying to develop this storm stronger. So if it's stronger, then it's more than likely going to follow the mid layer and the upper level winds around oh, the ridge and curve. Absolutely. So I think in the scheme of things, really all we have to look at is um, how strong, by the way, this is a site, uh, this is SpaghettiModels.com, that a uh, guy in um, Orlando, Mike in Orlando, put together. And um, we show this from time to time as well. He's got our web chats that are on here. And um, also just a, a ton of stuff. So we, we also try to show folks, you know, some of the different, in fact, look at this. He's got on the left-hand side, he has those same areas that are Hurricane yeah, Origins. That's awesome. That's a great looking website. Yeah, isn't it? I mean, look at all this stuff. And it's got webcams wow. and whatnot. So, um, <laughs> But again, since you're here from uh, 
from the National Weather Service site. Um, and I'm still looking for a few more questions, but uh, if anybody, uh, if, if there's anything that you guys want on, uh, or that you want to give on from your site, Tony, um, because they, I'll tell you, they have come, <laughs> the job of the meteorologist this these days is really changing a lot. Um, let me zoom back out. It used to just be a forecast. Now it's a matter of putting grids together and everything else. I mean, if you look on the left side of the Weather Services site, they've got their AFDs, which is their forecast discussions. They've got tropical weather. They've got a lot of links to a lot of historical weather, which is great. Um, and there's a severe thunderstorm warning somewhere. Let's see where that is. Uh, that was in uh, up, up north in Alachua, Gainesville. So again, um, what we often do on this site is whenever there's anything popping, we end up going right to your site. And um, because the nice feature is it allows us to, uh, you know, to zoom in to wherever things are really going on. And, uh, and it's certainly helpful. And, you know, while we're here, why not? Since uh, we've already been talking for the tropics for a half hour, uh, we got we we got some rain. We got some rain going in. Um, what's uh, what's your guys' take on um, why the next few days are going to be significantly rainier than uh, than of late? Well, if you look, uh, part of the answer or big part of the answer to your question, look at the motion of the storms. They're slowly drifting towards what it looks like it's the north, and that's because um, right now we are moving into a pattern where the winds are going to be more easterly, southeasterly, and we actually going to have times where the winds can actually be from the south. Part of this is because there is another trough system that is starting to develop to our north, and that high pressure that has been prevailing for the last couple of days is now migrating towards the east. And as the high pressure moves towards the east, it's going to then allow for this trough to drop further south, or shall I say that the trough is the one pushing the, the high pressure to the east um, of the Florida Peninsula. And as that feature that you see there, that it looks like a frontal boundary is now forming across the extreme southeast U.S., that system is going to actually approach the northern portions of the state by Friday. What happens is that it actually allows for um, the winds across the peninsula to remain southeasterly, remain from the south at times, and that is just pushing a lot of warm, moist air from the Caribbean into the Florida Peninsula. You can see it right there on the, floor, on the satellite, the picture that you have right there. If you look at the blues, the blues, the dark blues, and I think there were some reds there. Uh, I don't see it anymore, but you moved it, but... Uh, here, it, let's the switch here. satellite. Yeah, you there's, that, that, there's that delay here, but I'm showing the Gulf of Mexico to Florida now. Okay, yeah, I see it now. So there's there's a lot of moisture that slowly is going to make it into the state. And okay. ultimately, um, here, let's go to, uh, let's see if I can show some, let's show the eastern U.S. Yeah, see, this delay is, is freaky because I hear you perfectly fine as you hit it, but then <laughs> there's a 10 to 15 second delay before they see it. So again, now yeah. we are showing... Here, let's show um, this. This will give you a better idea of what you're talking about here. Okay, zoom yeah, in. And then if you look at that image, um, what happens is that if these front, if these frontal boundaries, if they just keep pushing all the way and they actually clear the state, then we may have one day with rain, with a lot of rain, and then there's dry air coming behind the passage of the front. But at this time of the year, because the the parent troughs up north that actually spawn these fronts, they're still not strong enough. And number two, they're still way up north. They're not digging further south to be powerful enough to push the front with enough strength so that the front actually clears the state and keeps going south. So very likely we're expecting that this front is going to just stall right across the Panhandle area. Maybe it's going to push it into Levy County. And then once this frontal boundary stalls, then the winds in our area, which are ahead of the front, they still, they're going to be blowing from the south, southeast, sometimes from the southwest. And on that pattern, that eastern gulf of moisture, on the moisture on the northern Caribbean uh, sea is going to keep just streaming into the state. And that moisture combines with the daytime heating then we have also the sea breeze getting into the mix, 
and you're going to have several afternoons like the one we had today that um, the day looked like it's fine, maybe some clouds or nothing big's going to happen, and then all of a sudden late in the afternoon when the sea breezes are kicking in and moving inland, there you have your thunderstorms. How's the weekend looking? The weekend is looking pretty much, um, up. we now have some 30-40% for the weekend. But, um, but we, what we're keeping an eye on is what the models are doing with that front. Mm -hmm. if, because um, GFS wants to keep the front for a little longer time than the other models. In fact, now um, I have up your, uh, your long-term graphic that's on your website, and you see from Friday to Saturday the difference. It looks like Saturday the front stalls out pretty much right on top of us. Absolutely. You see that right there. So there is so the long term. This how long is that front gonna stay there? That's the key. Mm. You know how far south it pushes. If it, it's we don't think it's gonna clear the state. It's just gonna remain there, and that's gonna be the key. So south of this front, there would be um, a better likelihood of deeper tropical moisture. Absolutely. Whereas north of the front, I mean, granted, it's not a cold front, but this time of the year, a front will bring in at least some drier air. So it looks as though wherever this front sets up, and you know, you could be talking 50 miles either way. And that 50 miles is different from you having a partly to mostly sunny day to having a cloudy day with scattered storms off and on. So, I mean, it's that tricky of a forecast, especially because today is only Tuesday. So, you know, we've got three, four days to, uh, to, to, to take a look at it. But um, if you were to say right now, looking back at that graphic, of the better of the two days on the weekend, if people want to plan their weekend now, what would be the better of the two days, Saturday or Sunday? Are you there? Yeah, okay. it's just that the echo is really loud. I'm waiting for the echo to finish. Okay. <laughs> Well, if you look, um, if you look at the weekend itself, um, it's going to be pretty similar Saturday or Sunday. But um, the way the models are are putting the the bulk of the chances of rain, I would say that probably Saturday it's more likely to have um, more rain than Sunday. But um, like you said, this is like day five, day six in advance. Um, if that if that frontal boundary um, stalls a little bit further to the north, then, you know, we can expect, like, the entire weekend is probably going to be raining. Okay. Because it's the dry air behind the front, the one that allows for the chances of rain to drop. So the position, the final position of that front is the key. All right, and I just had a question about our current La Nina. So if you were to say what might a La Nina have an impact on this area, uh, what would you say? Well, it's the wig. No, it's. I would say it's good that you bring this now because um, if this is, I, I'm assuming this is the topic that we're going to start closing the discussion. Yes. And it's perfect because it actually ties with the first question that we had when we were talking about um, in terms of the second peak of the hurricane season happening in the Gulf of Mexico and happening in the Caribbean Sea. Well, what happens is that when we have a La Nina, that's actually another ingredient. That's another key player in terms of having favorable conditions for hurricane development. When you have a strong El Nino, you normally have uh, more, uh, the conditions for hurricane activity uh, are not that good. During a, a La Nina year, those upper level winds actually become very favorable for hurricane development. So that's a very important ingredient that is also going to play a key role in what's going to happen in this second half of the hurricane season. And historically, when we are in a La Nina, our winters are typically warmer and drier. That's correct. Okay. All right. Well, yes, uh, Laura, we are in a La Nina. And... Um, I appreciate uh, Tony dealing with the feedback, the echo, and everything else. We are, because uh, he's literally hearing a, a double. But uh, uh, thank you so much. We've been talking for 45 minutes, and the questions are still piling up. So, um, again, I'll. Uh,
uh, this is uh, Tony Reynas. Uh, Tony's meteorologist at the uh, Tampa Bay's Ruskin office and uh, just a huge help to everybody here. Uh, we're building this each and every day. We're getting more and more people coming. So hopefully as we go through the season and we get severe weather events, we can talk to you guys and, uh, and we can let everybody know what's going on. I mean, it's just a, a, a tremendous, tremendous thing. So thank you so much, Tony. Everybody, round of applause for Tony. Thanks again. And, uh, and we will talk to you soon, Tony. Thanks again. Anytime, anytime. It's a pleasure, and I hope that we can do this uh, more often because getting in touch with our audience one-on-one, -on -one, it, it's, it's really what we enjoy doing. And thanks to you for giving us the opportunity, for Dennis. It's, it's been great. Thanks. Thanks again, Tony. Appreciate it. So again, that was Tony, and um, here's what we will do, guys. Um, unfortunately, um, as we'll s switch to uh, the graphics here, I'm just going to voice over a few more things real quick because we don't have the ability to change our, um, our graphics, uh, our camera rather, because it's hooked into Skype at this point. Um, so what we will do is I will just show you one or two more things that I wanted to and then we will end with it. Um, yes, everybody is clapping for Tony. Um, Tony, we're going to clap, 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 clap for all these people. Mike and Lisa and Shelly and Laura and Randy and Jim and Holly and Joey and, it, and Daryl and just a ton of people. So uh, again, thank you very much. Um, and lastly, I wanted to show, um, this is, this is our, um, our animator product, which as you see right here, this will give you the, I do want to show you the, uh, the Euro that we were talking about. Um, doesn't really seem to take nearly as much with this as the GFS did. Now remember, the Euro only goes out 10 days, the GFS goes out 16. Um, but if you look at the 12Z Euro here, I want you to see real quick what this does as this loads. Okay. Um, here we go. As it loads up. The one thing you notice is there's low pressure. See that right there? Now that's not a tropical storm. That's not anything like it. But it is a, it is a persistent lowering of the pressure. By the way, there it goes. It looks like there is a... Ophelia and the Euro is definitely taking it off to the north around the ridge. But look at what this is doing, and I noticed this earlier. Now, I would take the Euro over the GFS any day, um, even though the GFS has done very well this year, I will, I, will give it, I will admit. But look what happens here. When you get to day six and day seven, this area of low pressure along this stalled out front, and this is something important to remember, folks, is when you get a stalled out frontal boundary in September or October that goes into the Gulf and you have an energy source or moisture that can ride along it, you very often can find tropical development. And right there, that is what the Euro is hinting at. Now, it isn't necessarily doing much with it yet, but it's also 10 days out, and the Euro very rarely ever turns into something um, that significant. Now remember, there'll be a ton of shear behind this as well, um, behind that trough. So my gut is it may even be a, a hybrid, a subtropical system if it were to really form. But this is just something that the GFS is spinning up, as is the Euro now. And there goes Ophelia. And I noticed this earlier, so I wanted to show it. So um, outside of that, um, yes, Laura, the Euro, in my opinion, is the favorite model for a lot of folks, including myself, for track. Uh, intensity, you know, it's a crapshoot. Intensity, really, it just depends. Some models get hot, um, some don't. You know, it just really, truly depends on the year. They're always tweaking the models, they're always changing the dynamics of the models and trying to hope to get a better, a better forecast. But if you look at the 12Z, right here, the 12Z GFS, which remember we're now on the 18, and the 0Z will be coming up uh, again pretty soon, around midnight. But if you look at the 12Z, again right here, this is, there goes Ophelia. There's another wave that's behind it, but look, the 12Z keeps it low, but still curves it out with that big trough, and then look what happens right there. So the GFS has a history and a propensity to do this, but because the Euro now also thinks that lower pressure is going to develop in the Western Caribbean, in my opinion, um, odds are pretty good there's going to be something developing in the next 10 days. It may not be a true tropical storm. It may just be a rain event. Don't know yet. But, uh, but anyway, for the time being, I wanted to share that with you. At this point, 
uh, we will bid farewell to everyone out there. And um, I hopefully in the near future, we will be able to get our Skype or maybe even um, what's the non Skype one? My son is on another um, video thing. I can't remember what it was. Starts with an O. But that might work better because ultimately we want to be able to use our Skype and broadcast it uh, the other um, with the other way without having to go back and forth. So again, thank you very much. Thanks again, Tony. And you guys have a great night, and we will see you tomorrow.